Hello my friends and welcome to this special pick a card reading which is on what does your unconscious self want to tell you and we have three stages of our minds we have the conscious self the subconscious self and the unconscious self the conscious self is everything that we know and everything that we are conscious consciously aware of the subconscious is what's just underneath the surface things that we know but we're not immediately consciously aware of we need some kind of um, prompt or a sense of um, deeper awareness in order to, for it to come to light the unconscious self is something that we're ruled by quite a lot because our bodies work unconsciously we have so many processes that is working, that is working within our bodies that is unconscious. Um, and a lot of our actions are unconscious. So I think this would be a really cool place to explore. Um, and I've picked four decks. Um, and these decks, I've chosen the judgment card, which is the call. It's the call to action. It's the call where we need to rise up and take that spot, take that place. Um, so that's the card I've chosen. Um, you have part one here with the um, Tower of the Holy Spectrum. You have part two. which is the Tower of Lithia, or Litha. You have Pile 3, which is the Dreamscape Tarot. Or Dream Visions Tarot, I do apologise, Dream Visions Tarot. And you have pile four, which is the Orion's Animals Tarot, Animal Tarot. So I was really wanting to do a reading which was involving darker cards, as in just black, you know, nothing as in like dark. I didn't really want to do a shadow reading. I wanted to do something that was going to help you really kind of de dip into a part of your mind that uh, <laughs> we don't usually have access to and it's really interesting and also my readings go a bit weird they go a bit um interesting more interesting <laughs> at night so i thought i would see what happens here um pile one pile two pile three and pile four the timestamps will be in the description box below and I'll see you at your reading. Bye. Hello, Paul One, and welcome to your reading. You have chosen the Tarot of the Holy Spectrum, so let's get to it. Wow. Awakening. Interesting. Now, our unconscious mind doesn't want us to know what's going on. It doesn't want us to, to recognise what's happening, quite simply. Um, so it's going to be interesting what this reading brings up. But it's interesting that this character, she wakes up and you can't see anything around her. <laughs> you can't see anything. Um, it's just she's looking at us not we're looking at what's around so there's we're really waking up to an unknown kind of aspect here something that's not consciously aware of obviously but something that's just really hidden but it's also a place where they've been for a long time and it's almost like everybody is there. So it's not like this, this is a, this is a choice that's not, um, 
It's not a common choice, I say. It's not something that, you know, everybody would choose. This is this is a, a definite like matrix like choice, a wake up call. Okay. So let's see what the archetypes have to say. What does Pile One's unconscious want to say to them right now? Okay, you got two. <laughs> I'm quite excited about this, but I'm also quite nervous. Okay, right, so the crone. I hope you can see that. There we go. The crone. Ah, oh, we have the animal as well. Look at that, wow. They both look very, very crow-like. Already we're starting off with this kind of like dark black theme already. Interesting, interesting. Okay. You're delving into a very deep old part of you, part one. This is an archaic part of you. This is something deep and... Uh, And almost, and very old, very old, old knowledge. Very interesting. Number 13 and number 19, okay, right. So 13, 19, 20, right, okay. <laughs> to spirit, what does Pile One's unconscious want to communicate to them? You've got two here as well, wow, okay. So we've got the sword and then we've also got the fountain. Mercury and Pluto, Neptune and the sun. Okay. I may have to look those up, my loves. I'm not going to lie. What I will do is I will put the judgment card back into the pile. Um, once I have done this so that we can see... Mm. okay maybe there's more okay wow the hunter <laughs> and the thief my god okay part one <laughs> uh, part of me is thinking do i really want to do this right okay <laughs> i hope i upload this anyway right so First of all, what I'm getting is, um, as I said, it's an old, archaic part of you. Um, there's something about the deep unconscious that is wanting to communicate from you, um, wanting to commit well, from you and with you. Um, there's actually, it actually feels like something's actually tracking you down um, in the respect of like it wants. It wants you to know that it, it wants you to become aware of it. Um, yeah, let me just look up these two, my loves. Okay, my darlings, right. So what's really interesting here is that this is about a fight for justice and you understanding your power. I said that there was something very primordial and really, um, really archaic. And it is about you tracking down opportunities in whatever way you can and understanding the dynamics of whether or not that this is good or bad in your own eyes because there is no such thing as good and bad it's only our perception obviously there is good and bad there is karma obviously you do things unto people um that causes bad karma then that will be returned to you but in the respect of here it's about your opportunities and also about you being strong enough to take those opportunities. There's, there's extreme strength here. Um, 
it's in between Leo and Cancer. So there's some big strength here. Um, strong, nurturing, kind of caring, um, fighting for what's right. Um, there's also this sense here of being able to communicate in a way that is going to fight for the right of people. There's um, there's a real kind of justified sense um, that's, that's being emulated by these two cards. And with these two, I can see that um, it comes from a real urge, a real need for you to fight for what's right after a sense of experience that you've gone through. It's almost like uh, there's... Um, you know, you've been through, you've, you've seen what people have gone through. You've seen things um, and you've awoken to the mistreatment. So now you want to take the opportunity to kind of push forward. Now we've got the thief here. Um, but that, that seems to me like taking the opportunity is something that you can just, you kind of grab and taking. And there's almost like a slight... Maybe there's a constraint on society, like a societal, um, in a societal sense, that maybe you're not, you're going against society and you're doing things that people are not going to agree with. And I, this noose is very, um, very prevalent. I'm just looking at that. And it's about you going in for the kill and really going, you know, b kind of spearheading that. And that's, that's definitely what these two cards mean, which is really interesting. They are hunters, these cards. Hunters with the, the tongue and going for something that you want in the respect of the, of the um, voice and how you communicate because we have Mercury and Pluto and we also have Scorpio and Libra. So it's for the liberation of people, but then also and of yourself but more so for the, the liberation of people. And then you have Neptune and the sun. And then you also have um, South Node and Cancer. Sorry, is that South Node or is that Leo? No, it's Leo. It's Leo. I think this one is South Node. So, um, or it's synonymous with the dragon's tail, it's called that. So... There's this sense of you having to rise up to fight for what you believe in. Let's see what the tarot has to say. Dear spirit, what messages does pile one unconscious self want to deliver? What messages does part see? Justice reversed. Yeah, you want to, like, there's... There's something where you need to fight. You need to fight for your for the right. Um, it's interesting how I chose not to take that. I'm going to leave it there, actually. Six of Cups. Eight of Cups. Yeah, you can't leave it behind. You can't. There's a sense of injustice that's happened. It may have been something that happened to your mother. Six of Swords. One more? Okay. Okay, you got two more. So justice reversed. Yeah, there may have been something that happened on the mother's side. It may even be like um, illness or something. Yeah, something that resonates with the mother or on the maternal side. The reason why I also say mother is because we were in the crone phase here as well. We have crone. We have the mother and the crone. Almost like a maiden figure here with the awakening. 
but it's something that you can't walk away from you may have consciously tried to walk away from it i think you have you've tried to like just leave it but it's interesting how we have two sets of swords here we have these swords here and there i hope you can see that because it's quite dark yeah it's beautiful you can see it okay so um yeah i get this sense of this kind of fighting yeah let's see what the astrology is saying the spirit what does part one's unconscious self want to communicate i can only take one and <sighs> gives me two okay so we have the air element and communicating okay Capricorn I use there's something about you consciously helping others in a form of communication look at how blue this is and look you give a voice to other people something about you being able to give a voice to people who haven't been able to have that voice yeah beautiful yeah there's some there's there's something about that um so your unconscious self wants to tell you that you need to fight for something and you need to take a chance on something that you don't feel, yeah, that you don't feel like right about. Because I don't think that you will be able to, I don't think that you'll be able to let it go. You know, you, there'll always be this sense. You, you won't know what it is. And it will keep on bringing you back to it, even if you think that you've let it go. But you can't walk away from it. Yeah, it's de it feels like it's definitely something to do with, with childhood, something there. Hmm, really interesting. I knew this would be difficult because <laughs> it's the unconscious self. But let's keep on going. The spirit, what messages does Paul one's unconscious self want to communicate to Paul one? The night. And it was reversed. Your dreams will help you to uncover this mystery. Um, but I think I, I've got a feeling you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I've got a feeling you know. Um, I don't think that this is, that this is your unconscious that's calling to you. Um, and by me being able to tell you about it, um, or the cards being able to give you some kind of idea about it will help you to to figure it out you know the unconscious is made conscious you know we start to understand about certain processes that go on within our body by examination by observation um by us allowing ourselves to to kind of uh look at what's going on to investigate you know there are certain things that we don't know that happens but then if we wait and we watch, then we're able to see that. And I think that's very, very Capricorn. You know, you've got that, that ability to, you know, there's a real determination here. And the air is very good at that. It's exceptionally intelligent. Air is of intelligence, of um, being able to discern, being able to... Um, communicate, being able to think, being able to dissect, to analyze, to investigate. Um, and you know, that's, that's the, like the thief is about that, you know, being able to, to be clever about it. Because I think that if you don't do it, it's going to drive you crazy. <laughs> like, 
there's going to be a sense of like not not being able to to um to deal with it if you don't deal with it like you won't be able to just leave it look how interesting we have death and then the nine and they're both like two characters that are like that your emotions will call to you they won't let you leave it so if you're looking for answers i would say dreams start looking at your dreams It's a very deep part one. Very, very interesting. Okay, let's see what animal energy you have. Oh, sorry if that shook the camera a little bit. Bear with me one second. I'll just move that. There we go. So, okay, does spirit, what messages does part one's unconscious want to deliver? Part one's unconscious self. I'll take that, the moth. Hmm. Yeah. It's almost like a moth to a flame. You know, like how when moths come, they come out of nowhere. Like they come all of a sudden, quite suddenly, when um, the lights come on. So this is about illumination. This is, this is a process of discovery for you, Par One. Um, about how you can find out what's happening um and you have to be quite practical about it i don't think that you're going to get away with just being like oh well i can that will come up when it's supposed to come up no this is going to require work if you want to know it the unconscious isn't something that um you know it will function regardless of whether or not you know about it or not but then it's your choice whether or not to be conscious of it are you going to hunt it down are you going to take those chances? Because I'm telling you, once you understand your unconscious mind, you become unstoppable. You become pretty much unstoppable. And it's a constant thing of the unconscious mind. Like, it's it's constant. And this is not something that can kind of like, oh, yeah, it's like the shadow and I understand it and I integrate it. No, this is, this is a step further. This is going deeper. The spirit. Oh, hello. This spirit, what does Paul one it's unconscious want to communicate? You keep on getting two cards. This is too many. Just want one. Thank you. Wow, pentacle, and it was reversed. Okay. So yeah, you may be there. May be an indulgence in certain things. Excuse me, that are stopping you from being able to communicate with that. You, almost like a lack of a lack of calling it out. You need to call it out. You need to recognise that that's an important factor in being able to recognise it. You have to call it out. You have to recognize it. You have to bring light to illuminate it. And also remember, it's very fleeting. It's not, um, it's not, it's not as easy to recognize as something that is in your unconscious and your subconscious self. This is deeper work. Um, it will almost be like an onion and parts of you have to die has to has to die in order to access these areas certain belief systems certain things that you have known about yourself has got to die it's got to be sl slown away got to be like worn away so that you can understand it okay so let's have a look at yeah let's have a look at these patterns what does Paul One's unconscious want to communicate with Paul One? <laughs> change. Change. It needs you to change. I understand that nothing can grow or evolve without movement. <laughs> wow, Paul One. This reading's incredible. It's incredible.
Things need to change. Yeah, you, you've got like a big mission that needs to occur here. You've got a, your, your soul is calling for it deeply. Something that is, that is old within you, ancestral. You may have ancestral um, trauma that is being healed. But there is a sense of justice that you are fighting for. Something that hasn't been, that, that you're not able to let go and affects people who are innocent. And as death is, de death, uh, it comes to us all, it doesn't matter who we are. So it's, it's about understanding that cycle and in, like kind of um, implementing those values on a wider scale. But you can't run away from it. Um, you have to track it down. I don't know if, if I'm talking about something that, that may, you know, you may not even know it yet. It just might be something that might be a calling to you, like maybe in your dreams, maybe there's been something that has come to you, but I feel like it's a deep, deep calling for you. Something so innate, so primal. Okay, let's get some angelic magic. <laughs> or some angelic, <laughs> angelic and blessings in the reading. Thank you. Wow. Archangel Sa Sarakael. Sarakael. Heart, soul, messenger. Yeah, this is something to do with you being able to communicate from your heart. This is such a fight for justice. I just, I, I feel like you're, you're kind of, <sighs> there's something so, it's like it's, it's so powerful. Like you have to do this. If you don't do this, then it's like almost like who will do this? And it's a fight that's so close to your heart that you have to do it. Look look at this symbol. It's beautiful. But it's also like it comes from such a tender space. Um, and this Six of Cups here kind of tells me that that's... Yeah, that's, that's, that's what you're fighting for, this right. You may be... It may be something to do with mothers. Um... But I do definitely see some kind of injustice, something that happened against maybe some kind of female or mother figure that you are feeling really strong about. And you may not even feel like directly cool. Like it may not, this may not have happened to you, you know, but it may be something that really stirs you. Something that really, really like makes you angry or makes you like stirred to move, to do something about. It's something that you feel cool to do about. Um, do something about um, and that's what your unconscious self is trying to tell you it's trying to tell you that you have to stand up and you have to fight for this because you have got a voice here um, you, you've actually got an immense amount, amount of power here I, I just from this these these cards here there's a lot of power here a lot of power particularly with the hunter as well but there's a sense of being plagued by doubts and um own personal stuff i don't know i just get this sense of not being able to walk away from something but i think that that's also really good because it means that you won't let it go and you'll fight for it like with the hunter you'll track it down but there's something i mean you may even be having nightmares or something but look to your dreams um but this, whatever this unconscious self is trying to... Because remember, our unconscious communicates to us through our dreams. 
that's how we're able to understand it if you if you note down your dreams you start to understand your unconscious and how your brain is starting to work in in its unconscious fashion you can start to gauge patterns gauge gauge certain ways of when it works certain certain ways at certain times and i think that you know approaching it in kind of a, a really Capricorn is is methodical. They're the ones that really strive to be number one. You know, usually if if somebody is going to be the best at something, most of the time they usually have strong Capricorn in their chart. Um, they are the ones who are going to do this, and they're going to be the best at it. Um, and they're going to be the ones that work the hardest. And I think that this is something that that is prevalent within you. You know, you won't stop until this is done. I feel once you get it you know but I feel right now you're in the stage where you you don't even know like you're like kind of like mm, what is this what is this I'm still exploring and you need to I think you need to investigate it um a bit further and understand that things need to change head towards the light as well but remember it's really fleeting and you know like when you hold a moth and then it's its wings just kind of like disintegrate in your hands so you have to be really careful because that's how delicate this 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 situation is very interesting very very interesting okay so i'm going to finish off the reading uh with a path of the soul card i usually do these in a different way i usually like look at the cards themselves and see which one kind of like um comes to me but this time I'm going to shuffle and see what happens and then I'll read them because they have like a particular um a particular uh kind of meaning so let's see this is card number 22 and um I'll hold it up so that you can see so this is called cosmos of the heart you are now being called to embark on a new path in your journey this is an inner path. It is the path of your heart. It is here where you are discovering your greatest strength of all, that deep connection to your higher self and inner guidance. Others may be surprised by your choices. They may even react strongly to them. Do not allow this to stop you. Send those individuals loving energy and continue on letting your heart direct the way. Take note of the synchronistic events occurring around you as life unfolds in this divine way. Wow. Wow, pile one. What a blast to start off the the readings. I think this is amazing. And I'm I'm really honored to be able to to gaze into your unconscious self in this way. Thank you for allowing me to do this. If you did like this reading, please do like it. Please do subscribe for more. I'd love to know your thoughts about this and what you think. Um if it resonated because um, I'm just doing a bit of an experiment right now just to see how it goes, but it, it's an incredible reading. Anyway, my darlings, you take care. Um, please do subscribe for more. I do uploads every day. Otherwise, I'll see you in um, other readings, future readings. Take care, my darlings. Bye. Hello, Pile 2, and welcome to your reading. You chose the... Tarot of Litha and this judgment card. I hope you can see that. So it's very interesting how we have like this kind of you know, we have a dead fox here, we have dead animals here, but they're it's almost like they're alive. So it's, it's really, really interesting. Hmm, so I'll put that to the side. Um, so just to make you aware that this is, you know, I'm just experimenting with this to see what comes up for you. Um, because the unconscious self is something that, you know, that that doesn't want to be detected it doesn't want to be revealed 
but it looks like it came out pretty quickly just then. Um, <laughs> part two, the vessel, the container, the one who holds the space. Yeah, I definitely got that vibe. Yeah, the one who who is allowing this, this kind of transformation to happen. Okay. It's a little bit clearer than pile one, so that was good. Um, but still, okay, and you got two. You got Hera, and then you also got the first quarter waxing earth moon leave stability yeah that makes sense you know being that container holding that space Hera was the goddess of um, the home she was the one who was Zeus Zeus's um, wife but she was also the one that basically kept uh, <laughs> um, kept Olympus okay while Zeus went off and did his thing. The spirit, what messages does pile? Okay, saying to me you didn't do that one until afterwards so it's interesting I didn't do the astrology until after the tarot which I usually do it the other way around but I don't know spirit is saying to me do it in the same way that you did it for part one so I'm going to do that right so <laughs> you got three but I don't know yeah let me let me do that again what does pile Two's unconscious mind want to communicate. What does Paul Two's unconscious mind want to communicate? The Archer. Hmm. Okay. I will continue. I get a, a bit of a teacher, you know, somebody who's a teacher. Wow, yeah. And it's something to do with your love, like with the love of your, of who you are. And the love, it's, what, it's, what, it's to do with what you love, what you truly love. Um, what gives you joy, what you feel passionate about. Um, you know, it makes you feel good. And it's interesting how we have this image here and this. It's it's very much about the female form and about um, that sense of femininity. Um, kind of keeping this container, keeping this home, keeping something sacred. I get the idea of... Okay, let's see what your tarot has to say. The spirit, what... Does pile to his unconscious self want to communicate to pile two? This spirit, what does pile two's unconscious self want to communicate to pile two? From what I remember, these don't really jump out actually. Yeah, so I'll have to pick it, okay? Three of Swords, reversed. The two uh, Ace of Pentacles, reversed. Temperance, reversed. Nine of Wands. 
Five of Pentacles. Wow. You may have something to do with um, possible like settlements after after like a after like a breakup or something like that. If um, two parties have ended up having to like split, you may have to um, kind of do something where you kind of mediate a feel. Um, yeah, because there's a kind of like lack of opportunity that really, that, that you, that, that gives you some pain, but it's almost like it's, it's not too bad, but it throws you out of balance, even though it was painful at the time. Um, there's a sense of imbalance that's going on here something that that you that it actually throws you off guard and causes some sense of defensiveness and also a sense of poverty so what does this mean you know the top here what i said was about home and about you that being really important almost in a sense being the queen of the kingdom, being the one who knows what's going on. There's a sense of control that's occurring. The archer is absolutely 100% in control. Um, and it's something that there's a deep passion about it, a deep unconscious passion about being um, this home. This, there's something about you that you're like, you know, and it's cancer as well. It's about being the home. It's about, you know, making sure that everyone's okay, making sure that, um, you know, that you, that everyone's feeling all right, that there's a sense, there's a motherly vibe that's going on there, almost like queenly vibe um, that everybody's catered for. Um, but um, when people don't appreciate that, it's kind of very, um, it's very destabilizing. Um, and that's on a general level, but in respect to what your unconscious is trying to communicate to you, it's trying to say that almost like that there, you, you almost put yourself in a sense of poverty by ensuring that there is this sense of, of family. So there needs, and it also, it also imbalances you. And it's really interesting because when cancer is um, afflicted, it goes a bit crazy. <laughs> like, cancer's a bit like, cancer's, cancer, um, when they're not in a good mood, you know, the crab goes a bit mad. <laughs> in want of a better word it kind of goes a bit weird um and can be very very selfish snappy judgmental so th there's a sense of your unconscious self is trying to tell you that your attachment is very strong to the element of control that it actually causes a sense of poverty because the ace and this five are here. And it's almost like it doesn't really bother you that much. Like it, it pisses you off. Like it hurts. It really hurts. Like it's almost, it's almost like, but it doesn't hurt as much as almost like that, that it's making you too out of kilter. It's almost like you're, the, the attachment to me here. There's a big attachment to it. Um, and that doesn't need to be there. You don't need to suffer as much pain as you're choosing to. I know that sounds really ambiguous, but it is the unconscious self. <laughs> I hope that makes some sense. Um, I think I'll pick one more. Okay, right. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that lion. So... 
yeah you're you're a fierce fierce ruler a fierce ruler we've got a lot of like um feline energy here um and i feel that that's really important and look we have mother again yeah i i just feel like the grip is too tight your grip is so tight that it's almost like it's it's choking the wealth that could be there um so the idea of it is to rule with with less control and to be trusting that others can handle it that's what i'm getting here that's what i think your unconscious self is trying to tell you and it's also trying to tell you that you know you you've got it under control you've got everything that you need um but this this kind of grip is really causing you to go a bit loco <laughs> If you find that you end up reacting for no reason over some s things, is maybe question your attachment. Because I feel like there's this overarching sense of responsibility that you feel that you have to oversee everything. That I, I really do get that. And you're passionate about it, you know, and that's fine. But I mean, you can't control everything. You can try, but you can't. No, what's the animal? Wow. Yeah, that's exactly that. Because it's the idea of the zebra having stripes. It's a very, very different animal. And it was reversed. So, like, I think, you know, that idea of understanding that, you know, that this is something that you're going to have to approach differently. You're going to have to think of it differently. Because what you're doing right now doesn't seem to be... I don't know, your unconscious self is trying to get you to change something. It's trying to get you to, to kind of see things differently. Sorry, not to change something, but, well, to change, like, your approach. But I, I, I just feel like there's this really strong attachment um, that you have to a certain ideal of the way that you believe things are supposed to be. And that needs to lessen in order for you to be able to feel a bit better about things. I don't know if that makes any sense, Pile to... Wow, humour reversed. Bear with me one second, my darlings. Okay, I just wanted to just double check what the meaning of zebra was. And I think, you know, what I was saying about changing your perspective, like, this is about being able to think outside the box. Um, something that is an anomaly. The zebra is, is just, it's just weird that they exist. Like, it's... <laughs> So, so why, yeah, and I, I think that kind of like disallowance of that is, is, is kind of suffocating. You know, you have to allow this, this space. If you're going to be this vessel, this creator, this, this ability to be able to like allow people to, to, to be, you know, you to, to hold people in this space, you have to allow the differences. And humor, I choose to focus on the lighter side of life. There's a sense that, they, that that's not happening. Feels like there's, there's a bit of taking, taking life a bit too seriously. Um, and that's what's, I, I just feel like there's that restriction and that kind of choking feeling that I'm getting. Okay, let's see what the Dreamscape Oracle has to say. This spirit, what does Pile Two's unconscious self want to say? Wow. So you got two. One was the prophet and one was the elephant. Very interesting. You, you're probably deeply psychic, Pile Two. I wouldn't be surprised with Cancer and this, this upper line here. Um, but, um, 
be careful it doesn't get too much in the way of, you know, you think you know it all. And um, because this sense of the elephant, the elephant's really strong. The elephant is like, you know, it makes one move, it moves. It, it's not, you know, it, it's not just like a little tippy toe, like a mouse. You know that the elephant has moved. And I just get that sense of gravitas with you, particularly by this front, um, by this top line. And people are scared of you. You know, people are scared. So I think it's important that um, you uh, you make sure that, you know, you're not... If, if you are going to be this kind of like motherly container for others, then you have to be really... You know, you have to... I think you have to rule your, your vessel with grace and ease. And it's about that. Otherwise, you know, people aren't going to want to come to you. And I think that's what your unconscious is trying to tell you. It's trying to tell you to, like, back off. That's what I'm getting. Okay, I think, yeah, I think that's... Okay, so I'm going to pull some angel advice for you. Pile two. Wow, indigo spectrum. Yeah. This is, this is third eye chakra third eye and very very beautiful in the fact that there is you know this this kind of deeply gorgeous feminine vibe but it's it's also about seeing about seeing the bigger picture um i, I do get this sense of like a little bit micromanagey kind of vibe here so your unconscious is trying to tell you that you know you are a ruler but um don't choke your kingdom you know what i mean um, get some lapis lazuli, lapis lazuli out. It's late, sorry. Lapis lazuli, and that might help you. Okay, so to close out the reading, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull one of these cards, which is the, um, the Path of the Soul cards, and they're fractal art, and then I'll read it to you. What does Paul 2 soul want to... Sorry, what does Paul 2's unconscious want to reveal to them? What does Paul 2's unconscious want to reveal to them? Okay. Number 11. Yeah, you got some strong psychic vibes, Paul 2. Strong psychic vibes. Okay. Here we go called in flow this expression this is expression in full flow let yourself be heard let yourself shine time to take center stage this is all about feeling the universal flow of energy joy creativity and communication sing dance let yourself be seen in all your glory set your inner creative being free express all of those things inside you that you would normally hide from the world now what i get from this is I get a sense here, particularly with these cards, there's there's this sense of holding oneself. Like, I've got to be a certain way in order to make sure that I'm, I'm seen in a particular way. And you need to chuck that in the bin. <laughs> That's what this is saying. It's saying that you need to lighten up, um, to do something that's fun, to let yourself go, to let yourself be free, to let yourself be truly in flow rather than holding on to things. Because I really do feel I just get this kind of like choking vibe that's going on here. I just realized one more card that I didn't pick. I was thinking there's another one that I didn't pick for you. I usually do that other one last, but Spirit clearly wanted it to go a different way today. Okay, right, so, wow, the silver bow, love, love pile three, sorry, pile two, I'm thinking number three because it's one and two, but pile two, the silver bow, so this is about love, which, I mean, is no, you're no stranger to love, I don't think you're any stranger, but I think, you know, love is something that sets us free, I mean, it isn't something that keeps us um, captive. So, 
it's about letting that go, letting that be free. There's that quote where it's like, if you if you really love something, like the, the man who, who plucks the flower doesn't truly appreciate and love nature rather than the one who lets it grow and lets it be and live its life. And I think there's that kind of vibe that's going on here. So, pile two, I hope you like this reading. It was an interesting reading, um, but a beautiful one nonetheless. Um, if you did like this reading, please do like it. Please do subscribe for more videos. Um, I'd love to know what you thought of this reading um, and if it helped you in any way. But otherwise, you take care and you have a beautiful evening or day or whenever you're choosing to watch this. Take care, my darlings. Bye. Hello, Pile 3, and welcome to your reading. You chose the Dream Visions Tarot. And this judgment here. Very interesting. Okay. So there's definitely this sense of, like, call. You're being called. call to action indeed and it seems like there's quite a big kind of crowd around it let's see what the archetype cards have to say dear spirit what does pile three's unconscious self want to communicate with pile three what does pile three's unconscious self want to communicate with pile three you got to the judge and the desert. Wow. Okay. The rabbit hole just goes deeper. <laughs> this sense of isolation. Um, there's almost like a sense of a bit of a... Not a martyr. Um more of someone who has to go through some, something in order to get to somewhere. Um, yeah. Like going through an ordeal or something in order to really understand the experience of it. Yeah. Let's see what the astrology has to say. Dear Spirit, what does Part 3 is unconscious want to say to Part 3? One, please. Just one. What does Part 3 is? Just one, please. <laughs> what does Part 3 is unconscious? Wow, you got the same as pile three. Sorry, pile two. Love, Venus. There's a deep passion. Something that you feel very passionate about. Deeply passionate about. This spirit, what does pile three? Sacrifice, yeah, that makes sense. And Neptune and Pluto in Scorpio, wow, all right. Interesting, very interesting. Yeah, the sense of like needing to go through something, needing to become vulnerable. Almost like you're stripping off parts of yourself. Okay. Wow. The witch and the sleeper. Again, the dreams are going to be really important for you. Um, they're important with all of the piles, but um, because 
I mean, you know, your dreams are your unconscious. They are your unconscious self. Um, but, uh, and I definitely thought that with this particular pile as well, because you chose the Dream Visions Tarot, and that's a very much, that's that's about connecting with the unconscious self through the dreams, through the dream state. So, yeah. But this sense of sacrifice, there's almost like a sense of lamentation as well that's going on here. I'm just going to just double check that mansion. Well, that makes a lot of sense. Um, <laughs> this is about this sense of self-sacrifice. You know, when I was saying earlier about you going out into the desert and kind of going through this ordeal in order to kind of be this person, be this judge, be this, um, be the person that leads others. I don't know. Yeah, there's a sense of like self-sacrifice. And as I said, it's not martyrdom. I don't think it's quite there. The shadow aspect of it could be martyrdom. Um, but I think that essentially there's, there's your unconscious self is trying to tell you that this this sense of self-sacrifice is not as productive as you may think it is. It's almost saying to me that you don't have to go out and do these things. You don't have to go out to the desert. You don't have to, to kind of put yourself through this in order to like prove to yourself or prove to others, but more so prove to yourself that you're passionate about this cause. You are that. It's what you are. You don't need to like prove it to anyone or anything. Let's see what the tarot has to say. Dear Spirit, what does Pile Three's unconscious self want to say to Pile Three? What does Pile Three's unconscious self want to say to Pile Three? What does Pile Three's unconscious self want to say to Pile Three? It's too many. What does Pile Three? Seven of Swords reversed. King of Cups reversed. Eight of Cups reversed. Okay. The Five of Pentacles reversed. Oh, the burden. <laughs> oh, the burden. The burden, the burden, the burden. It's interesting. Similar similar message to Pile 2, but not quite as much. There's a little bit more um, harshness, I feel, in this pile, Pile 3. But it's almost like your experiences are dictating something in this in this instance and I don't yeah your unconscious is trying to make conscious conscious that you don't need to there's this self-flagellation that's going on and I don't think that that needs to happen and it's almost like you won't change your mind about it. Like it's just, it's so determined, particularly with these two. And actually this one as well, these three, these three, it's like, I know what I'm doing. Okay. <laughs> um, Seven of Swords reversed. There's a sense of honesty that you're understanding about that. Um... And it causes a real sense of destabilization. And a sense of not letting go, right? 
not really letting go of the past, not really letting go of things. Yeah, very similar message, but it's like that, that, that holding on to the attachment of what this means. Remember, we come into this world with nothing and we leave with nothing. It doesn't matter whatever experiences you've gone through. Just do what you're doing. Um, it's almost like there's a, a sense of not wanting to be isolated. Even though you spend a lot of, you may spend, a, excuse me, a lot of time in isolation. Um, also the Knight of Wands as well. Yeah, you're, you're, you're kind of holding back on yourself because I feel like there's this sense that you believe that you're in this perpetual cycle and you have to suffer. Yeah, there's a sense you have to suffer in order to like feel that you've lived a good life or that you, you've lived a life that is worth or is worthy. And your unconscious self is saying to you, well, that no, actually, that is what is unconsciously programmed in you, actually. You unconsciously are following this, this, this pattern. So that's what's slightly different from pile two. Pile two, you know, there's this unconscious, you know, it's different. Whereas this, this one is more about you, you know, you may feel that you are being judgy towards people or that you are doing these things towards people and you don't know why. And this is why. It's because you believe that people need to suffer in order to make their set themselves worthwhile. And it's very difficult for you to rest. I don't know if you sleep well, Paul. Three. Um, yeah. Okay. What does pile... Okay, I'll take two. Hmm. Okay, interesting. Psychism and the sword, four and eleven. I, I feel like you are, you know, you're a witch. So there's there's a sense of like you being able to manifest really easily. You have a good knowledge about um, cycles, about things that occur, about, you know, I, I feel like there is some sort of spiritual inclination within you, Path 3, and you need to use it in a way that's really going to be, you know, you need, you need to use it in a, in a better way, higher purpose. It's not all about this self-flagellation kind of vibe and judgmental on whether or not people have done things in the right way or whatever, you know. And this unconscious pattern is coming to the surface in order for you to break it. You need to like walk away from it. Because it's, it's keeping you in this cycle. The cycle can't complete. And you have to aspire to want to change. If you don't want to change, then there's nothing that you can do. <laughs> you can't do anything about it. <laughs> if you don't want to. Just because you come to a reading and like you see this doesn't mean anything. Um, you have to want to change. And that's what your unconscious self, like this is what's... This is why these readings are quite intense, like in the respect of like it is, it is also shadow. But it's not just shadow, it's something that's so innate that you might not even be aware of it. So it will take some investigation. And I, I do think that, you know... There is a sense of you being very, this is not something that you're aware of. Do you know what I'd do? I'd start to ask people, am I like that? If you can't see it in yourself. I want to take the phoenix. I'm going to take the phoenix. Because I think you're a phoenix, pal. Three. I think you rise. I think you're really powerful, Pile 3. I think you're exceptionally powerful. 
But I don't know, there's this entrapment of this cycle where you feel like you need to suffer and you need to get off that train. It's not really, it's not really productive for you. I don't really feel like it gets you into a space where you need to be in that. Um, there's a lot more other things to be passionate about and a lot more other things that you can kind of like lift your soul with. Thank you to your unconscious for bringing this to the surface. I think it's a beautiful opportunity. What was that? A raven. Wow, yeah, you've, you've got some insane psychic powers, Pal 3. You're, you're deeply intuitive, psychic. Um, and you have spirit guides that are watching you. Look, you have the familiar of the cat and the raven, and you have a phoenix. Yeah, you're divinely protected. And also, these are, these are your familiars to help you as well. I can definitely see you're a witch. But um, don't just be a witch for a witch's sake, you know. Be a witch and actually be a witch. You are a witch. You don't need to do, like, all of this stuff to make yourself a witch. You are a witch. That's what you do. That's, you, the, the magic is innate within you. There's no need to. And also, um, putting that judgment on other people. Everybody's a different type of, like, mystical being or whatever they are. Let them just do them. It's not about you and it's not about like how much you've you've ended up like putting yourself across or ended up ending up like putting yourself in a space where you believe that you're like more witchy than other people. Who cares? Who cares? Just do you. That's that's what I get from this. Okay. I'll take that top one. Pride. I love myself and I see myself in everyone. It's pretty apt, no? And it was reversed. So that says to me that that sense of pride is not um, positively afflicted. It needs to be changed. It needs to be needs to be in a space where you feel that you know you love yourself and you see yourself in everyone. In in a way, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. We've got people who are new to stuff and people who are like working through things. You've got veterans in the game. You've got, you know, you've got all sorts of people, all levels of people, but we're all coming to this awakening that's occurring right now and it is happening right now for a reason. And people are, um, they're doing things faster than they ever have done before, which is a beautiful thing. But there is also a lot of immaturity so I think this sense of hierarchy needs to be put in the bin in order for you to kind of, um, I'm, I'm thinking more of your own peace, you know? Because you are a magical being, Pal 4, um, Pal 3. Okay, I think, yeah, I'm going to close out the reading now. Um, and, oh. And what I'll do is I'll be using one of these fractal cards. Um, and these fractal cards will... Um, I don't know what they are, so I'll read you what they are. Sorry, I'm just getting a bit tired. Wow, beautiful, beautiful card. Let's have a little look. It is number 25. Let's have a look. It's called nature. Wow. Okay, right. So, it is quite bright, so you can't really see it, but it's, it's quite, yeah. Anyway, it's time to return to nature and reconnect. Enjoy the scent of the flowers. Walk quietly by the ocean, hug a tree, and get rooted in the core of Mother Earth. It is time to look within. Nature will bring you back on track. Watch, listen, breathe, and connect. Feel the pulse of life streaming throughout, fully and naturally. Through our heart, we are connected to all things, including our higher self. Sit, quiet your mind, place your hand on your heart, and connect. It is there you will find the truth. Wow, beautiful. Beautiful, Path 3. Beautiful. 
So wow, look at this unconscious programming that's coming to the front forefront for you to like heal and illuminate and and kind of transform. I'm really honoured to have transmuted this message for you. I hope you did enjoy this. If you did like it, please do like it. Please do share. Please do subscribe. Um, if you haven't done so already, I do upload every day. Um, and if you do wish to share in the comments, I'd love to know what you thought. Some feedback on this reading would be amazing because, you know, it's just it's an interesting reading, isn't it? I'm dealing with the unconscious self. Like, it's really weird. Well, not weird, but it's just like... It's unknown, isn't it? So I'd love to hear your thoughts. Anyway, darlings, you take care and I'll see you soon. Bye. Hello, Pile 4, and welcome to your reading. You chose the Orion's Animal Tarot and this beautiful Circadia, um, which is this judgment. Here we go, I'll just bring that up. Beautiful, beautiful card. Okay, so. Very interesting. I feel like quite an alluring, quite... Um, and then you've also got the pupa here. So there's a, yeah, there's a sense of real kind of... Um, deep hidden something hidden and as i looked at the clock it was one 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 <laughs> five ones right okay wow okay so let's see what your archetypes have to say pile four pile four okay already <laughs> okay oh you got two well, the king and the nectar. Good gosh, pile four. You never cease to amaze me. The sweetness of ruling, <laughs> of power. Wow. Wow. Let's see what your astrology has to say. What does Pile Four's unconscious want to say to Pile Four? What does Pile Four's unconscious want to say to Pile Four? Hmm. Friends, others, eleventh house. That's seven. Oh gosh, what is an L? <laughs> I can't remember. <laughs> um, but yeah, what is an L? I can't remember. Let me let me double check. Okay, it means fifty. L is fifty. <laughs> so <laughs> learning something. Yeah, um. Midnight. <laughs> okay, this spirit. Thank you. Recognition. Wow, flower, nectar, and sleeper. Wow. Yeah, of course. Of course. I mean, you know, the unconscious self, as I've mentioned in all of these readings, um, the unconscious self is at its most present during the sleep, during the dream time, Pluto and the moon, wow, okay. And then we also have, is that Pisces? I see, yeah, Pisces and Aries, so it's on that cusp. Gosh. And full moon as well, full moon, recognition. Something about embracing your glory, pile, um, for your unconscious wants to bring to the surface about you embracing your glory because it feels like you've been sleeping it feels like you've you've been it's it's a power it's a latent power that's been dormant and it needs to be awakened the 
because you need to rise. That's what I'm sensing. And your friends may be telling you or your friends may be stopping you. Like your friends may be telling you that, you know, you need to like step up or your friends might be stopping you and, and dumbing you down. One of the two. Because there's a need for recognition and something's not like the recognition is not happening. There is a need for the recognition. Just one, please. It said two, it wants two, so I'll take two. The unconscious has a lot to say. The acolyte. Yeah. And the poet. Wow. So that romantic nature. Okay, let me just pop that there like that. Yeah, there's something very beautiful and romantic about this. Um, and the acolyte is the person who's starting out. They're the person who embark who embarks on the course. They're the one who who starts out on the course. Um, and yeah, they're uh, they're just starting out, kind of thing. They're like the the apprentice almost. Um, so yeah, there's this uncertain energy of you stepping into your power. Almost like you don't feel like you deserve it. Mm. Interesting. Okay, let's see what Tara has to say. Dear Spirit, what messages is there for pile four? Ooh, quite a lot by the looks of things. Everywhere, everything went everywhere. I'll probably have to pause the video so that I can get them, so bear with me. Wow, well, Spirit is laughing at me at the moment, Pile 4. I <laughs> like. I looked at the clock just now and it was 12 12, so. Okay, so dear Spirit, what does Pile 4's unconscious want to communicate to Pile 4? Paul Fours. Eight of Swords. Ace of Pentacles. Wow, Ace of Pentacles coming up all the time. And the Wheel of Fortune, wow. Wheel of Fortune reversed, the Empress reversed. Interesting. The Eight of Swords reversed. The Ace of Pentacles reversed. The Page of Cups reversed. Wow, lots of reversals. Eight of Cups. Oh wow, Eight of Cups again. And the Sun. Right. You may have felt like you missed out on a chance. Your unconscious self is thinking that you, you missed out on something, but I don't think you did. I think you believe you did, but I don't think you did. Um, and the page of cups reversed. Yeah, there's this sense of like... It's kind of like a dissatisfaction with it the dissatisfaction of um almost like a non-committal energy but with the empress reversed it's almost like um there's a fight against the feminine nature that's occurring and there's almost like a sense of a desperation to not be trapped by your own thoughts but it's making you miss out on opportunities in fact it may be the fact that you're it may be the fact that you're missing out on the opportunities that's awakening you to this way of being this sense of st stopping and smelling the flowers stopping and, and, uh, and appreciating the nectar 
Because, yeah, this sense of being asleep, not fully being aware of what's going on around you. Maybe there is support for you and um, you're not you're not recognising it. There is support for you to take the throne, for you to take things forward. Because why is this why is this eight of cups that way? It's something you're not walking away from. I don't know if like maybe there have been there had been something that, that had that had upset you with friends. Um and maybe you don't believe them. Because I think that you can like really talk your way into like believing something, believing a narrative. You know, the poet is is this beautiful kind of, you know, you have this way of being able to encapsulate uh, certain things. But there's also like a sense of like, sometimes they just chat a lot of shit. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? about a situation that's like, they're kind of like going away from the re reality of the situation. Um, and I think, ah, that's what it is. It's actually that. It's the fact that you, you need to, I think, I think you need to allow yourself to, to kind of succumb to this romantic notion of the poet. You know, come back to this sense of the beginner's mind. Because that will help you to step into your power. Wow, that's quite that's quite undercover. But yeah, like for you to assimilate your power, because it's asleep, it's latent. For you to like harness that power, you have to. Yeah, you have to. You have to. You have to be more more romantic with yourself, more more indulgent of the nectar. Because there's the, the, these are quite hard. It's quite, like, intense. And it's, it's, it's stopping you from seeing the happiness. And, you know, this, this animal, I can't remember what it's called, is the, the chupa... chupa I, I, I can see the word in my mind, but I can't remember how you say it. The chupa cabra or something like that. And... Those animals, they just look so chill, man. They just look so zen. And I don't know, I get this kind of like grasping nature. It's like almost like I know that this is my destiny. I know that this is what I need to do. I know that I'm this person. You may be the leader within like your friendship group. Um, but it may be difficult for you to like maintain that. Or sometimes you might not see eye to eye with people. Um... There may be also like a sense of like enforcing your opinions on others with the Empress reversed. Particularly if you don't get your own way, if things don't go your own way. And this is something that you realise. And it's an unconscious pattern. And it's because your real true self is, is this king. And that's the core. So it's understanding... Is understanding that you do this, that the queen behaves like this, the queen part of you, because we, we, we all have the king and the queen within us. Um, but the, the king is where your destiny is, but the queen is coming out almost like an evil queen. I just got Charlie's Theron out of like, um, what's that film? The Huntsman? Yeah. She could have been an amazing queen, but... She went a bit off the rails, didn't she? So, you know, <laughs> it's not the best of things, is it? Okay, right, so let's get one of these. This spirit, what does Pearl Four's unconscious self want to say to Pearl Four? Wow, the turtle. Beautiful. Beautiful energy. Just going with the flow. Very protective though. And they just kind of want to just move with the ocean. And they live for a long time. 
Yeah, it's about this movement. This movement of going towards... But there's a sense of maturity about it. That I think is important to recognise that you have. Interesting how we have two, like, shelled animals here. So there's this sense of protection that's going on. Swimming either with or against the current. And also they, they can be very vulnerable animals as well, turtles. Wonderful, beautiful animals, but they're, they're just, you know, they're, they're, they're vulnerable. And I think appreciating that vulnerability is going to help find your inner poet. The spirit board. Oh wow, you've got the same, I think, as one of the other groups. The silver bow, it's love. Employing love within yourself. That poet, yeah, I, I hear it. Because it's very harsh. It's very harsh and you deny yourself some opportunities and you're quite like... I don't know, I, I feel like you use humour to like get yourself like... I, I feel you use humour as a mask. You don't use it as a... Um, you know, it, it kind of like helps you with your friends, but there's either a, you, you're devoid of, I don't know, I just feel like a bit playery, you know? And when I see player energy, I get the sense that it's somebody who doesn't face their emotions. And it's an unconscious pattern. That's why we have the full moon here, recognition of self, the poet connecting with that vulnerability. The acolyte, again, understanding that you, you begin and being a beginner, that's fine with who you are. This Just one, please. Gave me two and it was like, no, I'll give you like 15. Right, okay, bear with Thank you. Oh, wow, you got again the same. Your answer is in your dreams. It's about your dreams. Encouraging yourself to work out your, your unconscious in your dreams. Take note of your dreams. Because I feel like you're ignoring it. Get some accountability as well, I think. Yeah, some accountability might help as well. Pile four. Okay. So I think that that's all of your cards at the moment. Let me just see what I'm getting. Ah, yes. We have two more. I'll get you some angel guidance. Wow, grace. <laughs> Poets have grace. Poets have grace when they act, when they engage. It's beauty, isn't it? It's something that charms, and that's what nectar does. It's sweet. It makes us want to have more. It reminds us of the beauty that is within the earth, because I feel like you're not recognizing it. Pile four. Okay. So these um, are fractal art cards, Path of the Soul. I will pick one, or one will fall out. <laughs> And then I will read it to you. Okay. Wow, wow. Look at that. Beautiful. Beautiful pile four. That's number 36. So I'll just look that for you now. Okay, so it's called Revealed. Wow. I'll just stand up and show this to you. So, do you 
know how truly beautiful you are. It's time to stop hiding from the world. The universe is calling you. You have so much to offer, so much to give. This card is a reminder for you to see who and what you truly are. You are a part of the one. You are beautiful and perfect in every way. When you hide yourself, you are withholding not only your energy, but your love. Love for yourself and love for others. Embrace yourself and all your quirks. We all have them. Let yourself be free. Let yourself shine. Goodness, Paul Four, that's gorgeous. That's gorgeous. <laughs> Love that. Love that. Oh, my darlings, what a beautiful, beautiful reading. I'm so honoured to have channeled these messages for you. So, with the grace of the king, with the sweet, sweet nectar of the poet, I wish you well. I hope you enjoyed this reading. If you did like this reading, please do like it. Please do give it a thumbs up. Please do subscribe for more videos because I upload every day. But otherwise, and I would love to know your feedback on this reading um, because this is a first. And obviously it's to do with the unconscious, so it's pretty elusive. I don't know. Did it resonate? Did it not? Let me know your thoughts. Anyway, my darlings, you take care. Have a beautiful, beautiful day, evening, night, whenever you're watching this. And I'll see you really soon. Bye.